Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit that subscribe button for us? It really does help. Over the past year, we've produced videos that have more or less shown successful repairs. This was done so you, you my audience, can see what PGH Game Fix is up to and what our channel was going to be about. But I've decided to do a new series of videos called Try to Fix. In these videos, we're going to grab a random thing off the shelf and try to work on it. Most of the time, we're not going to have an understanding of what is wrong, whether it's bad description or no information from the customer. And we'll go through the thought process and the troubleshooting process so you can get a better understanding of what happens when something hits my bench. In today's video, I grabbed a Game Boy standard one. And the note on it simply said, broken, bought for parts. So I'm not 100% sure why it came to me if it was supposed to be a parts machine, but I thought it would be a good one to start with in this series. So if you stick around, you'll see if we fixed it. On the bench today, we have a original Game Boy. This one comes to us today, just says, doesn't work, bought as parts. So this video may be a little bit different, but kind of the same. Um, we're gonna try to fix it. I don't know what we're gonna find inside. Um, you know, sometimes I see this kind of stuff. People buy it at garage sales and, you know, it was down in a damp basement and inside is totally rotten. Um, but I have my test cartridge. Let's just go ahead and snap it in and see what we get. All right, we get absolutely nothing. And even our power light's not coming on. I'm pretty sure the batteries we have in here are good. But you know what, let's just, um, just go ahead and check them real quick. Oh yeah, these are fresh batteries. So the whole pack should be, you know, six volts or so, which it is. I have my probes backwards, but you know, a little over six volts. All right, so, so our batteries are good. So whenever I'm troubleshooting a, you know, a project such as this, you just start with the basics. You know, do we have power? Do we show any life? Um, there is a little bit of, acid erosion anyway um there is a little acid but it's not bad it's just some dots and since we were reading the entire pack i'm going to assume this isn't our problem but since we're here let's just go ahead and clean some of that up honestly that doesn't even look like battery erosion it's not green it's more like just damp um like it was probably rust at one time all right, so let's just get into it. These old ones were tri-wings. Although somebody else may have already been in it. These ones are Phillips. Okay, so on an original Game Boy, there's this ribbon, and it's pretty tough. You can just pull it down. We can move this bit aside for now. One of these screw heads looks rusty, which is never a good sign. But the board doesn't look too bad. See a little corrosion around our headphone jack. But nothing is awful. So let's go ahead and get the, the main board out. The nice thing about these old Game Boys is they were a, a bit modular. They have this separate headphone 
assembly that can be replaced if need be. And of course they had a separate power supply down here. All right, so nothing is looking rotten or wet, which is a good start. All right, so go ahead and clean up this contact also. And it may be something as simple as just a bad switch or a dirty switch. Nothing in the little power supply board looks burnt up. So one way to deal with a dirty switch is to just load it full of alcohol and run it back and forth a few times. And I know this looks hack or whatever you want to call it, but honestly, just removing some surface rust, sometimes it's all it takes. So we're going to go ahead and put this in continuity mode, our meter. We're just going to give it a check real quick. All right, the switch appears to be working. Um, in this position, we have contact between these two pins, and in this position, we have contact between these two pins. Okay, so let's trace it back down a little farther on the board. We'll come to our positive lead. This would be the off position. which I believe this is a grounded pin, and it is. This is a grounded pin. Well, that's the shell, but there's our grounded pins. So we've got power. All right, <clears throat> from here, maybe the switch was all that had problems. So let's set our supply up for six volts. Voltage, six volts, and we will hook it up. Spring post is negative. Hold this all apart so we don't short anything. And we'll turn our output on and turn our switch on. <laughs> all right, so it's looking like the switch was the problem. Let's go ahead and put a cartridge in and see what we get. Well, it actually looks like this one's okay. So, I guess what we should do, turn off our output. All right, so this was a simple one, but uh, I guess the reason I wanted to make this video in particular was just to show some diagnostic methods. Um, but let's go ahead and finish doing a cleanup on this since you know the customer would like it running again. So we know this bit is okay. So we should take out this board, and I believe we have more of these screens, and we'll clean behind the membranes. So give me a moment, I wanna see if I have another one of these screens, and I'll be right back. I didn't have another new screen, but we will replace that for the owner 
uh, since this one's pretty scratched up. So while I have this apart, we're gonna knock it out and then I'm gonna just tape it back into place and we'll replace it before it goes back. But as far as cleaning the membranes and the buttons, from this side, you've got a whole bunch of Phillips screws that need to come out. And it's kind of All right, with all the screws out, our main board or our video board lifts out and we can set it aside. We pull all our membranes and our buttons. And, and that one was about ready to fall out on its own. Um, you can see when this glue gets old, it just starts to fall apart. I like to clean that up with a uh, chisel style hobby knife. Okay, that's good enough. So, let's go ahead and get our screen board back. And these carbon paths are where our buttons contact. So we just want to use a Q-tip and clean them up. This one isn't too bad. You can see some of the, the carbon lifts. You don't want to get too aggressive, but you want to remove the dust and the dirt. Um, another thing that you can do with the clean end of the Q-tip is just gently wipe away anything that may be on the screen. Make it nice and shiny for the new owner. One word, this screen can pop out of the shell, this, the, the white bit here. And this cable here and this cable here are extremely fragile. If you ever get lines in it, you can fix the vertical lines pretty easy. Horizontal lines are, I've almost never been able to take care of them because the ribbon on this edge of the screen is, starts as a heavier phenolic type ribbon but then turns in this mylar one and it's joined in the middle. And uh, it's, it's almost impossible to, to repair. So we'll just do a quick detailing on this. Clean inside the buttons or the holes for the buttons. You can see how messy that is. I think we can see why that switch had failed. This top corner looks like it might have had soda spilled into it. Um, you can see how dark it is and it's dry and hard so That's a telltale sign that soda had been spilled into the top, into the switch. And as far as the outside of the shell goes, vinegar based Windex works great. Do not use ammonia based Windex or any other harsh cleaners. My Windex is gone. We'll get to that in a minute. All right, found our Windex. And for anybody who's new to the channel, the pump bottle I have sitting here is just 91% IPA. Um, it's a good general cleaner with really all of this, the electronics, 
Um, you can wet everything and it just evaporates and dries. It doesn't attack plastics. It doesn't attack any of the rubber. So it's just a good general cleaner. Not to mention with all the germs and junk going around these days with COVID and whatnot, um, it does kill, <laughs> it does kill everything. So as you're working on stuff, you almost don't have to worry about, uh, you know, how clean something was. Now we're ready to reassemble. When you put your main board in, the power supply goes down in here and the headphone jack just kind of sits there and make sure your two um, power connectors are in the proper place. Put our buttons back in place. Replace the membranes. Oh. Never fails. And of course, <laughs> we can't do it with the screws in place. I think I did the same thing in my uh, last Game Gear uh, rebuild. So now we take our main board and make sure there's no dust on that screen. Although it doesn't matter, our other screen is out. Put the speaker in. There's a couple uh, notches. Um, you can see it. You can see here on the speaker there's a notch and a, a notch in the body. So make sure that's lined up before the board is in. Otherwise, Kind of a pain in the butt. And you'll have to pick it up off the table just a bit to get the screws started. Otherwise the buttons and membranes push back on it. All right, all of our screws are in. A couple things while we're at this point. You can see that all the screw holes here are marked with little white circles. Obviously, we don't want to put a screw in anywhere else that, you know, is a, a mounting point. But right here, there's a hole, and it's very clearly marked, no screw. Obviously, this is the back of the screen. You put a screw in there, you run it in, you're gonna break your screen. But that's why that's there. So uh, one other thing we can do, if we wet our Q-tip, we can put a little alcohol behind the, uh, the rheostat for our volume or contrast wheels. And we can just give them a, a quick cleanup. We can do the same thing here. Just 
put it in behind the wheel. And I'll make it work better. Okay, now this isn't the easiest thing to do, but if you have it bent right behind this ribbon, if you bend it right behind the, the, the blue backer, you can really get a, a good push on it. And this isn't gonna be the best angle, but I'll show you the easiest method. Um, you know, make sure it's straight. Don't, you know, if it starts going in crooked, just kind of stop, but line it up until you feel it's lined up. And then you can get a thumb behind it and push it straight in. Uh, this ribbon's really pretty tough, so it's not a big deal to put pressure on it. Okay, get a little capped on tape. We'll temporarily put our our window on. Uh, the reason I pulled that window is because it's much easier to do when it's apart. Um, you know, I've seen people try to remove them, especially with like Game Boy Colors and Game Boy Advances. Um, you know, and they're trying to remove it while it's Still attached and uh, you know they'll come in with a hobby knife or sharp tweezers and then they just really they beat up the plastic shell so we're just gonna put a little bit of capped on tape on um, capped on tape is heat proof and electrical proof so it's something good to have on the workbench but since we've disconnected it now all we gotta do is pull the tape and we can put a new screen on Test cartridge in. Just our contrast, just our volume. And our screen looks good, so. RAM test good, screen test good. All the buttons are working. And our sound works. All right, that just about does it for this one. I know it was kind of quick, it was kind of simple, but for the people just starting on working on their equipment or on you know different items they may have around the house, there is a logical path for the troubleshooting. In this case, we had no power. So there's no reason to look at cartridges or anything else. We need to see if power is going from these batteries and into the circuit board. And on this video, we saw that we checked our batteries, we checked our contacts, we followed that up to the switch, and obviously the switch is where we were starting to have problems. There have been other times where the switch checks good, and then we get down into our power supply board and we see there's no power coming out of it, and so on and so forth. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and make those down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it really does help. Thanks for joining me and we'll catch you on the next video.